Hey guys, I'm Levi Gates for The Rag Company and welcome back to Detox with me, Mr. Jason Kilmer of KXK Dynamics. How you doing, buddy? Good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no, of course. So this one we were going to kind of tackle a question that a lot of detailers always seem to face, mm -hmm. when to polish versus when, when to, to sand. sand. Yeah. And so for those of you that are wondering, let's say you've got a truck that comes in that as we call them Idaho pinstripes. I've also heard Utah, basically every state calls them pinstripes, but they're guys who take the trucks up hunting, they get scratched. Obviously in certain situations, if the customer is paying for a full, you know, paint correction, correction. on that to get yeah. it back, those are the instances you're gonna have to sand. But on other cars where the, maybe the damage, um, I've had customers that they go through an automatic car wash a ton. Which you have them here. We do have a ton of automatic car washes here. And uh, in some of those instances, a lot of people, maybe you've seen it in uh, rental cars. Mm -hmm. They run them through their automatic wash there. They're washed a thousand times in, a, in, in, in less a, than in a, a year's year. course. Yeah. 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 Or more, 1,500 yeah. times. Yeah. And you go to polish the hood because maybe a dealership bought it and they want you to polish out all the scratches and guys try and cut it and they can't get it to cut. Not even close. Yeah. So there's varying levels of those scratches mm -hmm. in the clear. Mm -hmm. So one version is to just wet sand mm -hmm. the whole mm -hmm. thing. And a lot of guys get scared of that because they, they think that it's taken off a ton of material, material and they're worried about it. But what, what we've kind of talked about and you've talked about is this is almost a safer. You have more control. Okay. Um, you know, you can use a DA. I'm not a DA fan sanding. I like hand sanding. I have much more control. Um, thing about with a machine, doesn't matter what machine, you don't have full control over the rotation. There, there's some things that you don't have control over. Um, and with the sanding block, you have feel. Every pass you make, you can make it count against you or for you. Okay. So, you know, 10 passes with a piece of 3000 grit paper is a lot safer approach than just putting a machine on it and bearing it down and trying to get it out. Right, okay. It's a much safer approach. You're gonna remove less clear. Even if you're to use a mill gauge, say I was to hit an area 15, 20 times with some three, a fresh piece of 3000, I'm probably only gonna remove a tenth of a mill. With compounding, with some of the, the more aggressive compounds out there, you may remove double of that just from compounding. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you're also heating, heating the clear up, yeah. which isn't necessarily bad, but I feel it's much more controlled method to sand it and then do a, a light polish or a little more aggressive polish to get the sand scratch out. Yeah, so this way you're, you're limiting your heat, <laughs> you're limiting that uh, variable of how many passes the machine is actually making mm -hmm. because you have that control by you counting, control. you can see or you can feel. You can always wipe it off too and check it. Yeah. And that's what I, I suggest. You can do a pass, wipe it off, check. You yeah. can do a couple make, passes. Make, yeah, just you know, start a test hood. See yeah. where your skills are. I mean, that's with anything, um, with polishing or sanding. See where your skills are at. If, if you wanna you know, further your knowledge and your skill set, see where you're at. Yeah. Um, basis wise, but um, the sanding really is a good method to go ahead and do that type of, of uh, removal because it's so controlled. Yeah. Um, and then just do a light polish and see where you're at. You may have to go back and sand more. Yeah. That and makes that's sense. Okay too. <clears throat> well, and again, it goes right back to like we've always said, we keep drilling it in, get a junkyard hood. This makes so much more fun because you can. You can actually either mimic that kind of stuff. You could put those scratches into the surface. You can add uh, the defects that you want to yeah. try and get out. And you have that ability to play and maybe test that level. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, what did we do in Florida? Number one, I gave you a homework hoods. assignment. Yeah. yeah. Well, we did the different segments. We did. Sanding. Yeah, we and built the we little grid. Them. Yeah, yeah. So and then we measured how many each pass did based mm -hmm. on the difference. And that's something mm -hmm. you guys can literally replicate and do yeah. yourself. And a lot of guys can, you know, that's the key is a lot of people just don't seem to understand that they're, um, you know, they just get scared. It's yeah. a lot of it's, it's scary. It's a fair thing. And, and you know, 
there's, you know, I still have, you know, when I do show cars, a healthy fear. Okay? Right. I don't know what it's going to do until I try to attack it. Mm -hmm. Usually I'm a little less aggressive, um, but I, as I feel more comfortable with the car and the panels and all this, yeah. I, I get more aggressive. Um, so there is always a good healthy fear to have, but um, you can't further your career or see where your level at is if you don't test yourself. Well, and one thing people, you know, maybe don't understand also is by testing yourself with this style of processes and mm -hmm. this type of stuff, again, with a junkyard hood, you can get a junkyard hood, try and revive it. You can mm -hmm. also buy a second junkyard hood and take it to a body shop <coughs> yeah. and have and them have it re -sprayed. bury it mm -hmm. with clear. And yeah. you can get them to put five, seven coats so that you have a ton of material that you can keep playing with. You can you know, see, you can test your limits, so to speak. Yeah. You can work on and, you know, start with something mm -hmm. like 600 grit yeah. and work your way back up, knowing that there's not a, an issue. And I mean, for some guys, you could probably, you're probably already doing work with a detail shop or a, a body shop. Body shop. Trade it out. Yeah. You know? And it's always good to have a body shop on standby. That Just too. Just in case that something too. happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I've had things happen. I on a number of times I have as well you and know. it was very lucky to have a guy yeah. just half a block down the street you yeah. know could take care of something for yeah. us or fix something and that that makes a big difference it's also fun to have a body shop person around that you can bounce questions off yeah because yeah. they can explain some things that most detailers probably don't understand because like we said earlier, the old adage there's the lowest guy on the totem pole in a body shop is the wet sander yeah and the highest, most fanciest detailer is a wet sander. Yep, yeah. So, and the detailer's making usually and, a lot more money than, yep, the, yeah. than the low guy at the total. Yeah, point, exactly. And shop. so there's different variables in both situations. And yep. so being able to pull from somebody that has that knowledge uh, works really well. And for some of you that have never tried, uh, I will say I have tried it. We have, I have cut a hood with some 3000 grit and then done a two step on it and been able to get a better finish. Yeah than pulling out a wool and rotary and, and trying and to we did at mats too and we did it at mats too we did side by side tests where visually we didn't tell matt anything i just let him kind of do it himself and say well, what do you see yeah what looks better without telling him and you visually if you look at it correctly with the lights um and lighting is a whole nother avenue to go segment to go about but uh, if you look at it with the lights correctly at an angle you can see a difference yeah so and it's then pretty cool with um, this you can do this same method with maybe soft clear coat or mm -hmm. is it a little bit a soft clear coat hard clear coat you're gonna notice the difference um, of how the paper and the sanding block cuts okay and smell and feel and just a bunch of different things. Once Maybe you use all your senses. Yeah, all your senses. A lot senses. of people don't. Yeah, and that's where, with my cerebral policy, I have really weird senses on how I can feel things. So um, that's why we created the blocks in the construction like we did to try to maximize those senses for someone that hasn't necessarily been around the body shop world or sanding. So you can say, okay, close your eyes, run it over surface, you'll be able to feel it if you just kind of let loose and let go and let your fingertips tell you where they're at, yeah. where surface surfaces. Well, and those of you that are wondering, if you've been detailing for any length of time, you've been polishing for any length of time, there's that Zen moment mm -hmm. where you kind of go in and you feel like you're seeing through mm -hmm. the backing plate and into the clear coat. Mm -hmm. And you're watching that correction as it's, as it's happening yeah and getting into that zone is really special but that's utilizing those senses i know i can this i can smell i can see and i can hear machines going at a certain speed and mm -hmm. i could hear it in my shop where i tell guys hey 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 you need to go do that you need to do that panel yeah. again and i'll just hear it mm -hmm. and they'll say yeah. why i was like you didn't get everything on that panel yeah. yeah and we go back and they do a couple more passes and they get it but it's being around it for so long, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm used to that. But for some of these young guys, they've just never, it's, they, they it's wanna make money, clicked. they've never yeah. clicked it, or maybe they are just a joke that maybe it's that little <laughs> peek behind the curtain, they get a second of it, and then it closes again on them because they're not paying attention they're not to focused. it. 
Yeah. And again, with a junkyard hood, you can take that time, spend that time in your garage or your shop and listen, mm -hmm. listen to that paint, so to speak. Almost yeah, well, like when, when focus I... on the block and listen to what yeah. you know your hands are doing. I mean, you and I did it. Yeah. You were showing me and you were like, did close you hear your, it? I said, close, close your, your eyes. eyes. Yeah. And I could feel a difference and then I could also hear a difference mm -hmm. in the way that the, the block was running yeah. across the surface. When I teach someone, we start on a junkyard pan where I scratch it up all different variables and I say, okay, just polish it without sanding because I want to see where they're at, mm -hmm. what their thought process is, what compound, what polish, what pad they're using. And there's no right or wrong answer. That's the great thing about detailing. There's so many, the chemicals and the machines and all that have, they're so good now. Yeah. When we first started. Yeah, we were rotaries and three pads yeah, and that was it. Cut That's and all polish. we had. And man. I would hate to see some of the work I did way back yeah, when. Yeah, me too. Because I know what it looked like. It mm -hmm. looked terrible. <laughs> but you and me both. <laughs> that's all we had. Yeah. So the detailers now are so blessed to have, um, you know, the companies and the products and all that. It's so much, so much easier. And the information. The information's out there. Whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, um, you know, that's not really the question. The question is, this is a good time to be a detailer coming in the industry because there's a lot of information out there. Yeah. Um, that they can, you know, just by a click of a button be exposed to yeah. at a moment's notice and then use it as a refresher, whether it's a podcast or a video or something like that. There's a lot of good for information out there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you guys want to learn more, you can uh, check out KXK Dynamics on Facebook, Instagram. You can look up Jason on, uh, Instagram and Facebook as well under Jason Kilmer. Check out Andy Ward, Proficient X, and Aaron Knox at Reds Detailing, Detail Co. And uh, as always, for more videos, stay tuned right here at the Rag Company YouTube channel. And don't forget to like, comment, and share. <laughs>